All right, this is point three, where we're going to learn how to find the range, the variance, and the standard deviation, and understand the range of rule of thumb, empirical rule, and Chebyshev's theory. So if I have these values, this sample of statistics students that participated in an experiment to test their ability to, to determine one, when one minute has passed. In other words, you just, you asked them, when do you think one minute has passed? And this is when this person said one minute's passed and it was only 55 seconds, next one 51 and so on. We want to find the range, the variance, and the standard deviation of this data. And we want to identify why the standard deviation from the sample may not be a very good estimate of the entire. The range, just simply find the high value and subtract the low value. So the range is 21 seconds between 49 and 60. The sample variance measures is a measure of variation of values from the mean. In other words, how far away you are from the mean. And we're going to do this by hand the first way. And as you're going to see, even though this is a small sample, it's still kind of time consuming. So you're going to use your calculators to do this. This is the formula where, get a different color going on here, where this means to sum, we're going to add up a bunch. So this is my variance. I'm, what am I going to sum? I'm going to sum each data value minus the mean and then square it and then divide by the sample size, n is the number of samples, minus 1. So as you can see, I need the mean, so I find the mean by adding up all these values, divide by the number of values, each data value, each one of these, and I subtract each one from the mean. As you can see already, this is time consuming and it's only five values. Think of it was a hundred values. So I've subtracted them. Next, I'm gonna square each one of them, add them all up and divide by one less the sample size and I get 79.7. Remember to get this sample standard deviation. All you have to do is just take the square root of the variance so notice the variance was s squared, where the standard deviation is just s, because I'm square rooting it, and I get 8.9 seconds. As you can see, even with five data values, this took a little while, so you definitely want to use your calculator to do this. If you haven't watched the video from 3.2, you, you should, because I've already talked about how to enter data into a list by hitting stat, edit, and edit, press enter. Go through, type each one of these values in, pressing enter, so 55, enter, 51, enter. Then press stat, calc, one variable, statistics, and enter. So stat, arrow over to calc, one variable, statistics, and press enter. And again, I did this in 3.2. And here, you're, you're, you need to tell it where the data is located. So just hit second and one, and that'll put your L1 there. And then you'll see right away, it gives you a readout. In fact, you can see the mean that we talked about in the last video. It gives you the standard deviation, which is nice, so you don't even have to calculate it. You don't have to go through and manually calculate it. And like I mentioned, this is nice for when you have a lot of data values. Use your calculators. All right, the mean of electrical energy consumption amounts for a home during a two-month period is 2,851 kilowatts, and the standard deviation is 488 kilowatts per hour. Use the range rule of thumb to identify a minimum and a maximum usual amount of electrical energy consumption. For one particular two-month period, the power company recorded consumption of 1,820 kilowatts per hour. Is, does that so to find the minimum, or a, a usual value, take the mean that they've given you up here, 28.51, minus 2 times the standard deviation. In other words, that puts us within 2 standard deviation would be a usual value of the mean. 
and this gives us a minimum. I do the same thing for the maximum, but instead of subtracting, I add. Thus, this gives me the high and the low range. So notice that this value here does not fall within these limits. So it actually, this value is pretty low. It would be considered unusual. All right, now this is kind of going to make you understand that why we multiplied by 2 for my standard deviation on the last example. This is a very, 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 very important rule, the empirical rule. It says heights of men on a baseball team have a bell-shaped, so that means it looks like that, a little bit better picture though, distribution with a mean of 184 centimeters and a standard deviation of 7 centimeters. Use the empirical rule. What is the approximate percentage of the men between the, these following values? The rule just basically says if you are within one standard deviation below the mean and above the mean, that this is 68% of your data. So 68, you would expect 68% of your data values to fall within here if you're within one standard deviation. Two standard deviations is 95% of the data, and three standard deviations is pretty much all the data, 99.7% of the data. Okay, so this is very, very important that you have this down of one standard deviation. How much is that of the data? Two standard deviations and three. So what I can do here, back with our question, if I have the mean and I want to know where these fall, I can look at one standard deviation, which is just subtracting one standard deviation below the mean. I add, give me one standard deviation above the mean. And as I can see already, that's this one. We'll get to answering that in a minute. I can do two standard deviations, which now I multiply my standard deviation by two so minus 2 times 7, and then plus 2 times 7. Three standard deviations, I multiply the standard deviation by 3. This will make way more sense always. And you'll hear me answer in your emails. I'll say, did you draw a picture? Did you draw a picture? That is draw your bell-shaped curve. Put your mean right in the middle. These values that I just found, I said one standard deviation below, remember, was minus 7. One standard deviation above was plus 7. So this is 68% of my data between the heights of 177 and 191. I can do the same thing for two standard deviations. Remember, that was 2 times 7, and I subtracted it below, and plus 2 times 7, and that gives me, that's all this data, 95% of my data, and then the same thing for three standard deviations below and above. But this makes more sense if you'll draw the picture, because then you can see where your data values fall within here. My picture, and as I mentioned already, is it makes sense for part A <coughs> that this is, <coughs> sorry for the coffin, one standard deviation or 68%. Part B, if I look here, is pretty much all the data, which is three standard deviations or 99.7%. So drawing this picture really helps to see um, and understand this empirical rule. All right, Chebyshev's theorem. Heights of women have a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 161 centimeters and a standard deviation of 6 centimeters. Using Chebyshev's theorem, what do we know about the percentage of women with heights that are within three standard deviations of the mean? And what are the min and the maximum heights? Well, Chebyshev's theorem is 1 minus 1 over k squared, where k is the number of standard deviations. So within three standard deviations, if I just do this math here, 
I get 89%. So what I do is next, then to find the max or the min, we take three times my standard deviations here, subtract to be below, and add to be above.